Francisco, my neighbor Francisco, Matthew here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com and with the help of my GoPro camera I'm going to show you how I cut prescription bifocal lenses for your Ray-Ban 2132 New Wayfair color 6, I'm sorry, yeah 6052 which is the black crystal and the 55 eye size. So let's begin. Let me take everything out of the original packaging that Ray-Ban sends it to me. Your Italian leather Ray-Ban case your Ray-Ban frame and your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth. So this is your frame. The 6052 is the black crystal. It comes with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping from Italy. And I'm going to take that off to work on it, but I'm going to put it on back there for you. Now these come as originally as sunglass lenses with the little G15 sticker on there. And I'm going to pop out your original heavy glass lenses. And instead, I'm going to install lightweight, unbreakable polycarbonate lenses into your frame. So let me take your frame. And again, this is the Ray-Ban 2132 New Wayfair. Hopefully the glare is not getting you. And the color is 6052 in the 55 eye size. So let's take your frame, put it into my tracer, and hit... What am I doing? Hit... Wait, I got a trace. I got a trace. Got to hit a couple buttons here. Hang on for a second. There we go. Now this little stylus is going to go around and trace the shape of the right lens before moving over and tracing the shape of the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and nobody is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic Ray-Ban frame and you will receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. If you have vision insurance or flex dollars, my receipt has my federal ID tax number and you will be reimbursed for your purchase whether you have need a prescription or not. So that is the shape of the lens, only magnified. That's what it looks like when it's not magnified, when it's actual size. Now I want to go ahead and enter your pupillary distance, which is 63 for a bifocal. Your distance is 66. Your near PD is 63. Divided by 2 is 31 and a half. My computer starts at 32.5. So I'm going to back that off to 31.5. Your bifocal height is 16. I'm going to enter that there. 16 and we're going to do a line style bifocal so that's the grid I will use there and let's go ahead and magnify again now these are your lenses the lentes take the first one out the second one out and you can see the traditional line style bifocal this is the right lens because it's going to come inward and that is the left yep and just so there's no mix-ups let's go ahead and label that one R and I'm going to put it onto the platform you can see it much better now, that bifocal. Now this is a block. I like to call them Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens using bubble gum. But I don't have any bubble gum, so I'm just going to spit on it. Patooey! Now it'll stick. No, I need a double-sided adhesive sticker, and I have two left. Boy, I was just about to run out on this whole great big long roll here. All right, get back up there. So the black side is the sticky side. I'm going to stick that onto the block. Set that one there grab this one and this little silver button on the back is a magnet it will do its job twice as I will just about to show you the first time pull the paper away to make the black side sticky Let's put that in there it's to its magnetical component now this is as you can see is the bifocal I'm gonna line it up on this grid we're at 31 and a half 16 31 and a half 16 we're good there let me get everything lined up just perfectly and hit the button and now the block is going to be applied to your right lens. Let me do the same thing now for the left lens. As soon as it flips over, there we go. We're going to get that lined up perfectly. I'm going to stay between those two lines so it's centered. And I'm going to use that straight line as a guide to go by to make sure your bifocal isn't crooked like that. So let me get back to there. Hang on, hang on. Can't see what I'm doing. Shouldn't have had too much coffee. Oh, almost forgot to put the block on. Pull the red paper away to make the black side sticky. Marry that magnet to its counterpart and hit the button. And now the block is being applied to the unright lens. So, this is the edger. This is what costs $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds. I tell everybody to go out and buy one. Put it on your kitchen counter and then you won't need me in anymore. You can cut your own lenses at home. The actual cutting wheel 
is over here on the far right. It's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away your lens material. This wheel in the center with that channel, that little valley, that's what's going to put the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. Now the magnet's going to do its job a second time. I'm going to put it into the chuck, or as I like to call it, the Charles. Hopefully you can see this. There we go. Now it's in the Charles. And I'm going to pull your shape up onto the computer. And I do not want to polish the lens. I do not want to put a bevel on the front surface, only the rear surface. And I'm going to hit the green arrow, which is start in every language. The door closes, the clamp shuts, and then the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses to make sure the lens is large enough to fit into the frame. You can see as it's tracing it to make sure it's large enough. And now it's going to do it twice to measure the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so that the lens fits best and cosmetically looks the best inside the frame. Now you're not going to have any edge thickness with this one, but it's just a routine procedure that it does. I work with a lot of strong prescriptions all day long and this is really critical for most people but not for you. Now if you notice that flickering in the background that is water running, it is there to collect the optical sawdust that will come off the cutting wheel, but polycarbonate lenses cut dry. Where plastic and high index plastic have water splashed on them the whole time. Now your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. It is virtually unbreakable. It is bulletproof up to 22 caliber and has both UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin from overexposure, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you're going to have permanent sunscreen for your eyes that never needs to be reapplied, unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that have to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun. Now those two white styluses are going to trace one more time just to verify its own little check and balance system to make sure exactly where to place the bevel. If you notice your lens is still completely flat, just like a nickel, if I were to take it out now it would stand up on the counter on its own. It's now going to go down into that little channel, that valley, and get a knife-like bevel applied so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. It's a very dull knife, but a knife dull like me, but a knife-like bevel nonetheless. But your lens will be so sharp, as I like to say, it will be able to cut a wet piece of tissue providing that you soak the tissue in a bucket of water overnight and then press down really hard with your lens, you might be able to cut it. Now the water has kicked in just to wash away any optical debris. A little car wash action going on there. Say, that reminds me, I need to take a bath. By the way, Francisco, your wife Letitia, found a little baby bird and she in the past week has nurtured it back to health. It had fallen out of the nest and it was a sure to die, but your wife has nursed it, and soon it will fly away and you have done a great deed to the world. The trees will be very full of songbirds now. Now that little arm went out, that placed the safety bevel onto the rear surface of the lens. And now just a moment, the door is gonna open. I will take your lens out. I will dry it off to make sure just so it's not slippery as I continue to work on it. Now, I'm just gonna use my thumbnail to make sure all the optical sawdust is gone. Where is your frame? Here it is. I'm gonna take your frame and see if the lens fits first time around. I may have to take a little bit more off, but I'm gonna tuck it in at the outside corner using my thumbs. Nope, I press down and it goes right in. So let's do the same thing for the left lens. We're gonna place it into the Chuck, the Charles, the Charlie. Hit the L button. And then the green button again, the door closes, the clamp shuts, and then it's gonna be traced again by those two white styluses just to make sure that the left lens is large enough to fit into the frame, is tracing it to go all the way around. And of course, doing its job twice to measure the thickness to know where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness, although you have no edge thickness in this frame whatsoever due to your prescription. But it's still, the machine's gonna try its hardest. Now, as soon as the left lens begins cutting, I'm gonna to continue to work on the right. Now, Francisco and his wife, Letitia, have a very successful business at Buckhorn, where I got started, Buckhorn Country Club and Fresh Market Produce Stand. <laughs> so they sell some uh, baptismal 
what do you call them? Well, the clothes, the attachments, the invitations. They also do the Kinsera stuff. I'm, I told Francisco, he said he would come to my next o Ocho Sera ceremony. <laughs> as soon as I turn eight, he will come to that ceremony. Now I'm gonna place your lens into my Marco 101 lensometer. And I'm gonna test your prescription, which is plus 75 minus a quarter at 180. I'm gonna turn the knob and I am getting, let me verify that. Yeah, plus 75. We start at zero, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, and one tick mark away from one. I'm gonna check your astigmatism correction, and we're back to plus 50. The reason why that works, the way the prescriptions work, the unit of measurement, is called a diopter, and it's spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R. It starts at zero and goes up from there. Zero, which is Plano, 25, 50, 0 0.75, one, and so on. So, you need three steps of magnification for your farsightedness. In order to make everything clear far away, it has to be magnified by three steps. So that's why there is a plus sign. It magnifies what it does. Now you have one step of astigmatism correction. Now there is a stigma over the word astigmatism. It just means shape. People don't freak out when you hear that word. It's like saying someone has straight hair, someone else has curly hair. You don't freak out when you hear that about people's hair. But astigmatism is what makes sixes and eights look alike or the letters P and F. It also causes people to squint because you're trying to sh change the shape, adding curvature to your eye. Now, think of astigmatism as the fine tune knob. This first number makes everything the correct size. This number is going to take away the fuzzy edges like a fine tune knob will. We're going to turn that knob to 180. A straight line is 0, 90, 180, 270 at the bottom, and then from 270 back to 0 to complete the circle. So we're going to turn that knob starting at 0 past 90 to 180. Now, you have no astigmatism correction in your left eye. Still, you only need 0.75 steps of correction there to magnify to the correct size. These first two numbers are real values to be concerned with. This last number at 180 could be anywhere from 0 to 180. It just tells us where to turn the fine tune knob. Now, you also need an additional two diopters for your bifocal. So I'm going to read that and we're going to end up with plus 275. I'm going to turn it back to the spherical one. We're good, I'm gonna raise it up, read the power, and we're at, this is what how you know what reading glasses to buy. It's called the add, it means in addition to what's up here. So you have 75 here, you add the two together, and that's why you end up with a 275, one tick mark away from three. Now your left lens is done, let's go ahead and take that out. Dry it off, and find your frame. We're going to tuck the left lens in at the outside corner using my thumbs. I press down, that snaps in there. We're going to take the block off and let's go down, read the power of the left lens. And I am getting plus 75 again. Let's raise it up, read the power of the bifocal. And yes, I know there's purists out there that say you have to turn it around to read the bifocal power, so I'll make them happy. And what do you know, we still end up at 275, no matter what direction I read it from. Now, I am going to deliver to these to you since you are my neighbor, but everyone else gets free shipping anywhere in the United States, and this is the point that I explained to everybody, that when you get these in the mail, there is a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there is an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other, that is because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And because of that, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm going to get these in standard alignment first. Also known as a three-point stance. The so three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, I'm part of that 80%. When I press mine down, they wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me. Flip these over, press down, there is no wobble. I close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly, and they do, and they're not askew in any way. Check to make sure the tension is the same on each hinge. Now, actually, let me measure the bifocal height. Let me do that while I'm here. Give you the full service. Yep, 16. Check the PD. We're good there. Now, Francisco, this is what your lenses look like while they are clear. You can see the magnification effect as I move it over the letters. As it magnifies, as it passes. Now this is what your lenses look like clear. I'm going to expose them to a strong burst of ultraviolet light and it's going to cause them to turn dark. And as you will see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for transition lenses to darken. It takes about 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15 to return back to virtually clear. 
Now, Francisco, I explained this to you before, but all transition lenses will get dark on day one. Give them exposure to the sun for the first two weeks and they're going to continue to darken every day for the first two weeks until they reach their final setting. After that, they will work for years with maximum performance. The only time they won't work is if you're behind the windshield of a car. Your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays so your dashboard doesn't crack from sitting in the sun all day. That's why they won't turn dark. Now, if you have a convertible or a motorcycle, they will darken. Or as soon as you get out of a car, they're going to darken. They're also temperature sensitive, meaning they'll get darker when it's 85 and 90 degrees and below. In fact, the cooler it is, the darker they get than it's when it's in triple digits. When it's 100 degrees outside, you're miserable, they're miserable. Nobody likes to work 100% when it's triple digits. So this is the first time they've been activated. Don't worry, Francisco, they're going to keep getting darker. Come on, we talked about that, don't you remember? But that's that. If anyone has any questions about what I can or can't do, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. My neighbor Francisco, I hope you enjoyed watching as I made transition bifocals for your Ray-Ban 2132 new Wayfair in the color 6052, which is the black crystal in the larger 55 eye size. You see the black front with the crystal sides. So that is that, and ev hopefully everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.